Hi everyone, Greg here from Fish Plate Films and welcome to CV Shortcuts, a series of short videos in which I'll show you how I adjust my CVs in my Tsunami 1 and Tsunami 2s to get them running and sounding even better than they did before. Like in this Chivo here that I'm trying to put number board lights in, which uh, is not too bad, the devils are having problems with, but anyway. In CV Shortcuts we'll be looking at the real basics, like addressing your locomotive and taking it right through to adjusting the equaliser so you can get your speakers to sound as best as they possibly can by cutting out the sounds that they don't produce very well to enhancing the sounds that they do produce very well. And also things like adjusting the back EMF so on grades you can be in notch 8 with a big throttle setting and have your locos just crawling like they do in real life. So without further ado, let's get started and I hope you enjoy the series. Well, we're back on the layout and welcome to the BNSF Birdwood Subdivision and CB Shortcuts Volume 1. Now, I guess we should uh, address the elephant in the room when it comes to CV setting. When you open your Tsunami 1 or 2 booklet and start having a look, you'll start reading all these things about uh, bits and configuring bits and all this sort of stuff, uh, showing you all this bit configuration. All sort of Don't get too concerned about that. That will just uh, put you right off. That's for all the, the nerds that like doing all that sort of stuff. Uh, and that's one of the things I hope to explain in this series, that if you want to, you can go through all that and you can do it that way, but they do give you shortcuts and it's much easier to worry about all that. Like, uh, let's say, for instance, um, locomotive direction, locomotive use direction, uh, setting bit zero to one will invert direction. Well, you know, that just puts people off, I think. Um, you just go to the table that says all your directions and you set the CV to where you want to go forward or backwards, that's it. Um, I guess they have to do that for the people who really like to get into that computer electronic stuff, but um, I do some of it working on my signalling at work and I hate it there and I certainly don't want to have to muck around with it on my models, so there you go. So don't worry about that. If you open the, uh, the books, which I suggest you do, go to the Tsunami website and download their full manual for Tsunami 1 and 2 or whatever decoder you have, steam or diesel, and print it out and that way you can have a handy reference. I use this all the time. I've been programming, programming Tsunami decoders for nearly ooh, 15 years, nearly as long as they've been in Australia, probably a bit longer, and I still go back to the book every now and then. Right, let's get started. Now, the first thing we have to do is address the locomotive. Always address your locomotive with an extended address, uh, which is the four digits. Um, the primary address or the short address is only three digits. Now a lot of the early DCC command systems can only do three, uh, but most of them now I'm pretty sure can do four. So uh, extended address is what you want to do. So once you've done that, which we have with this locomotive here, we need to unlock the speed table. Uh, so that will enable us to adjust all the speeds and either put in our own speed table, like I have done, or just have a straight speed curve for when you, as you adjust your throttle and your speed steps go up, the voltage to your motor goes up at a linear speed. So as you're adjusting the, the throttle this way, the vo voltage to the motor goes this way. That's the standard, what they all are set up to. I have mine set up differently, but we'll get into that down the track. That's way down the track. Now during this series, we'll be doing all of our adjustments on the main. We won't be using a program track and we won't be using JMRI. We'll be doing everything from the cab and on the main. Now when it comes to motor control and back EMF control and inertia and all that sort of thing, you have to do it on the main so you can actually see the locomotive performing. Especially when you're speed matching, you just can't go with values and think, I've set this one, okay, I'll match this one. Every locomotive is different, every motor is different, every drivetrain has maybe a little bit more or less grease in it, has a, a bearing that's a little bit tighter. I have, well, 30 Kato's on this layout, I think 25 Kato's or something on this layout, Nearly every one of them has different speed settings. Two within one or two values, uh, that's about it. But those one or two values make a big difference in how they run together. And as we've said, I've said many times, because we're using worm drives, the locomotives cannot be pushed or pulled, not even 1%. If you try and push a worm drive, 1% it will bind up. If you try and pull a worm drive, 1%, anything, it will bind up. They're not made to be pushed or pulled. And I really do wish we move, would move away from worm drives or a different type of worm drive. You can get worm drives that can be pushed or pulled. And I really wish we could move away from that because the whole reason why we have to frig around with 
Back EMF control and speed matching is only because of worm drives. That's it. Most of the smarts in your decoder are there for speed matching to an incredibly small tolerance uh, that doesn't need to be there. And if we had normal gears like a locomotive, we wouldn't need to speed match them hardly at all. And they would work better if they were, obviously, closer. Like the real ones, they're not speed match, but they do have a, a variance in where they are in, in what particular notch. But they're not down to the mile per hour. And of course, a real locomotive can be pushed or pulled as it's just a normal spur gear. And um, so I think our models need to be somewhere in between. But anyway, that's almost a rant. Woo, woo, woo. No rants in these videos. Well, maybe one or two. Right. <laughs> So that's the thing, we'll be speed matching and doing everything on the main, and we'll be doing everything from the cab. So let's go and set our CVs for our Ford and reverse trims, which is Ford maximum speed. I don't know why they call them Ford and reverse trims. Once again, that tsunami, the, the boffins being tech heads. Uh, so we've set our Ford and reverse maximum speeds so our notches are more realistic. So in notch one or two, the loco isn't screaming down the track. So let's get started. So if you go to your Tsunami 1 or 2 manual, if you go to Tsunami 1, it's page 16, and it's page 20 on your Tsunami 2. Now, you'll find the settings on there. Now, what we need to do is find the correct value of the CV that we need to unlock the speed table and have the locomotive work how we want it to do. So it's pretty simple. If you go down the, uh, the list, we know that we want an extended address or long address. We know that we want to use uh, use the speed table. Yes, we do. We want to unlock the speed table. We don't want analog mode, which is no. Uh, we want 28 to 128 speed steps. We don't want 14 to 28 speed steps. And we want direction normal. Now, you can change that. If you want the direction normal to be actually running in reverse, then this number would not be 50. It would be whatever you want it to be. But for most of us, we will end up with a number of 50. So once you program 50 into CV29, so CV29, go down your list, get whatever value you want, but normally it will be 50. Put in 50, and now we can adjust all our speed. Now I'll just show you quickly here if you're new to CVs, but if you're uh, very new to CVs, I suggest going through and practicing with your DCC system first, so you know where all the buttons are and what they do. So we're going to, our locomotive is already addressed, 762, what is it? 7626. And we're going to program, program loco on the main, absolutely. Now through this series, we will not be using JMRI, we'll be doing everything on the main. Because especially with speed matching, you cannot do it uh, on a computer and sitting there. You have to be physically watching the locomotive, even with the back EMF controls, but we'll get into that later. Uh, Prema, yes. Program loco 726, yes. And you see here, 2 for CV, we press number 2. And then the first one we're going to do is 66, which is our Ford trim. So that's the, the speed, the maximum speed that we want to go in Fords. So we go 66, enter, and you'll see there it's already got 100. I've already put 100 in. I've slid, that's what I run my maximum speed at, that's less than half. So what we'll do, we'll show you the difference in reverse. And we'll just go enter, and then it will come up next one. The next one we'll do will be 95, which is our reverse maximum speed or reverse trim. Right, so what we're going to do now, we're going to run the loco back at speed step uh, 14, which is notch 3. And you'll see how fast it's going, and then I will adjust the CV as it's going past, and you'll see how much it slows down. So we're adjusting CV 95, which is our reverse trim, or reverse maximum speed. So here we go. Okay, it's set at 100. Was it on 200? So I'll press enter when it gets into the frame. There we go. So we saw that drop down now. Now that's much better. Right, we've adjusted CV 66 and 95, which is our maximum and revert maximum forward and maximum reverse speed. 
As you can see now, our notches are much better. That's notch three. It's going along a lot slower than it was before, ridiculous before. And what we've done now, because we've adjusted the maximum voltage, we've also adjusted all the voltages in a, in a straight line all the way down to zero. So we've also adjusted the start voltage, which is CV2. Now you'll find, here we go, we'll go to speed step one. Now that's lovely and slow, but it is a little bit too slow for my old Tsunami ones. Uh, so what we have to do is up the speed, up the start speed, which is volume two, not by very much. And also what will help with this will be our back EMF controls, which we'll get into a bit later on. So what I'm going to do now is set CV2 program on the main, press enter, like I'm going to enter, two for CV, CV, uh, CV2, enter, and I'm going to put in a value of two. Right, let's see how we go now. There we go. So you can see that's uh, only a tiny bit faster, but it's a bit smoother too. Nice. These Tsunami 2s have a really nice start and stop, a nice smoother start and stop, which you can't get with the Tsunami 1s. You can get close, but the Tsunami 2s are fantastic. Yeah. Right. So we've done that. So we've done 66 and 95, which is our maximum forward and reverse speeds. We've done CV2, which is our start voltage. So the locomotive will move off nicely. And that will vary on your locomotive and how fast you have CV66 and 95 set. The, fast, the, the higher you have them set, the less you will have to do your start, start voltage. Also depends on the locomotive. Now, the next one is momentum, three and four. We'll be doing a whole video on momentum uh, because for when you start using the F11 brake feature, you'll have to do set your momentum different. But what we're going to do now is just put a little bit of momentum in so when you cut the throttle off, uh, the locomotive will roll to a stop. So let's, let's do that. Now with our momentum set, that CV is three for forward momentum and four watt reverse momentum. We've set that at 100, so let's see how long the loco rolls for and how slow it accelerates. 100 is not a bad setting to have. Right, we've cut the throttle now. Focus camera. Speed set 14, that's uh, I'm going to cut the cut power. So that's the throttle completely off. So there you go, much nicer, much nicer indeed. Hmm. Right, well, there you have it. That's it. I told you they're going to be short. So here we go. Here's our list. What have we got? CV 66 and 95, our forward and reverse trim, our maximum speed to get your notches closer together so they're more realistic. We have them both set at 100. Now, whatever you think is a fair thing. CVs 3 and 4, our momentum, we also have them set at 100. Once again, whatever you think. You can adjust them separately too. You can have your forward momentum longer than your reverse momentum. But remember, all your locomotives must be set the same for when you start consisting. You don't want one wanting to go further than the other. So make a note of what you set your momentum and all your locomotives must be the same. And our start voltage, CV2, remember, once we adjust our uh, maximum speed, 66 and 95, that, send, that reduces the voltage through the whole speed curve. So your starting voltage is going to be a lot less. My Kato's Tsunami 1's have to be set at three and my Tsunami 2's 
in the therns and in the caters, I think I can set them at two. So they're a little bit better on the, on the star. So that's it. That's it. Thank you very much for our volume one CV shortcuts. I hope you enjoy the series. We'll be going through uh, two or three CVs at a time. That's it. Some of the more complex ones when we get into uh, back EMF control and sound, we might only be doing one CV in a short video. But I keep them short and sweet. That way you can go away and practice and come back and you'll uh, be an old hand in no time. So I'll uh, continue running this old girl in. And I'm very happy with these Genesis Jeevos, I must say, apart from number board lights, but we're fixing that. Yes. So, but apart from that, then with Sony 2s, sound and run fantastic. Uh, a lot better than my first Genesis, I'll tell you that. Anyway, thank you very much for watching CV Shortcuts Volume 1. We will see you in a couple of weeks with CV Shortcuts uh, Volume 2, Part 2, which we will be discussing uh, back EMF. Yes. How to get your locos to start very smoothly with a load. It's all very well and good. We have this starting nice and smooth uh, without a load, but to get more realistic slow starts, and especially on the grades, we will be reducing the back EMF to a point where uh, it's just enough to stop the locomotive from jerking, but just enough to get a train moving on a grade. That's really fun stuff, and it'll really bring out the more realism in your in your locomotives. Anyway, that's coming up in part two. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks for watching. Hooray for now. Bye bye.